Hey, 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 everybody. I'm trying this again because apparently I had no audio the first time. So I think this is working now. Somebody can confirm in Twitter or Facebook or something. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, let's see. This is my new show. This is a live show I am doing. Uh, let's uh, go back to uh, the actual video of me. This is my live show. This is the Tank Girl Mobile live show. And the idea here is to do some news, some reviews, some commentary, some opinions, some madness live on the air on a regular basis, hopefully weekly, uh, from wherever I happen to be, which might be tricky in some cases when I'm traveling. Uh, but I'm here. We're going to talk a bunch of stuff. Uh, and so let's let's get started. Uh, I think most importantly right now for me is uh, the news because there's a bunch of interesting stuff that happened next, last week. And so really I want to talk about last week because, you know, um, it's what, Monday night? Uh, there's probably not much going on today. I, I didn't really check the news that much. But um, let's start uh, about the news with last week's news. So let me just switch to... Uh, screen share here and we'll get this going. Hang on one second. This is not what I wanted. So the first bit of news is Intel. Uh, you know, Intel is in trouble, uh, laid off a whole bunch of people recently, and then they announced last week, and this is an article here from Anantech, that they were going to stop making, uh, you know, basically stop, stop pursuing smartphone SOCs, which is a sad state of affairs if you ask me. I mean, they got rid of the X scale business uh, about a decade ago or something, and uh, they've been trying to make X86 a viable option for phones, and they haven't really succeeded. And I think if I were them, I would continue doing X86 for laptops and PCs and stuff, and maybe some tablets, but I would also do ARM devices, you know, compete with the big guys like Qualcomm and, uh, you know, Exynos and, and whatever. I mean, you know, if Huawei can make their own SOCs, and be competitive with the Kirin set. And, you know, there's MediaTek and a bunch of others. Why wouldn't Intel be able to do that? I know they want to stick, do everything with x86, but really it's kind of ridiculous. So this is uh, this is bad news. And, it, you know, I, I hate to say this, but x86, you know, uh, I mean, th that market's dwindling compared to this ARM-based market. So uh, this is bad news. And so it seemed pretty relevant for me to talk about it. The next bit of news is an exciting bit of news, I think, and that's the fact that, oh, my phones are going crazy, that, uh, you know, we've got um, we've got uh, Mr. Osterloh here. I think I'm saying his name properly, but uh, Rick Osterloh, the CEO of uh, all things Motorola at, at Lenovo, is leaving Lenovo slash Motorola to go back to Google. And I say go back because for a while Motorola was a part of Google. And under his tenure, we got the Moto X, the Moto G, the Moto E, all these great phones. And, you know, he's not going to be in charge of Nexus and Pixel and Google Glass and a bunch of other really cool stuff. So this is big news. This is exciting. So this is the article. Check it out. It was on Recode. There's a bunch of others, of course. Uh, news sites have covered this. The last bit of news is Nokia making a comeback in uh, the devices business. As you know, Nokia was split into pieces, two big pieces, uh, after uh, the smartphone and devices division was acquired by Microsoft. And that left the, the kind of services and networking uh, divisions uh, under the Nokia name. And uh, the maps part, um, the here maps and stuff got acquired by the three big German car makers. So where does that leave Nokia? You know, basically they made the N1 tablet, which was an Android tablet, look like an iPad uh, about a year and a half ago. And, and that's it for devices. So this is exciting to me. This means Nokia is going to get back in the device business in some way, and maybe we'll get a smartphone. But we think this is a French company that makes an analog smartwatch uh, and a bunch of other things like Wi-Fi scales and, you know, all kinds of health and fitness devices. And, you know, they're doing very well. And so this is kind of an interesting trend of consolidation of the wearable space. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be surprised if uh, uh, maybe Pebble gets acquired eventually, Misfit got acquired. So, you know, this is interesting. And, and I'm glad to see that hopefully we get to see the name Nokia on a bunch of new devices soon so there you go maybe they'll keep the name withings who knows uh yeah so let's go back here to uh me being in your face because you know that's what i do being 
in your face. So I uh, hope you're enjoying the, the broadcast, and I hope that uh, I can get some stuff in the Q&A. Uh, feel free to, to go ahead and ask questions. And of course, uh, you know, uh, Twitter, TNKGRL, at Tank Girl, and on G+, et cetera. I'm going to keep an eye on things really quickly here. Let's see. Uh, anything happening? Nope. It's crickets, uh, but you know what? You got to start. I got three viewers according to you guys, so that's uh, that's a start. Uh, considering I didn't tell anyone I was going to do this because I'm bad. Um, so anyway, the news are done with which is this week. Uh, let's talk about some devices and accessories and things. So I want to start with the phones that I'm, that I'm playing with right now. Uh, I'm not going to review them, but I want to tell you what they are because, uh, first of all, I want to point you to my HTC 10 review. If you haven't seen it, it's on my YouTube channel. It's doing really well on YouTube. So, uh-oh, we froze for a second there. No, that's okay. We didn't freeze. Uh, let me, um, yeah, what is happening? Hang on a second. There we go. Uh, let me go back to the uh, screencast and show you... Um, the um my my review real quick here let's see so here are um, is my htc 10 review i think you should check it out we're gonna roll it and you can watch the Hi, beginning it's tank girl and this is my review of the htc 10. now before you watch this review i strongly advise you to watch my previous video which is my first impressions and i will second that you should watch my first impressions video as well which you can click on right here to see uh and then of course watch this review video because i think you'll like it and uh so uh check this out also i was in beijing china and a bit of time in shanghai last week in the week before and i went to the beijing auto show and i went to see the big Le eco launch where they launched a bunch of devices including these phones check it out Hey there, it's Tank Girl. I'm here in Beijing at the Le Eco event, uh, and they just announced three new phones. Uh, this is the uh, Le 2, and it's uh, also followed by a Le 2 Pro, and blah, blah, blah. So the point is, go check out these two videos. They're on my channel. Uh, you can get to my channel from my blog, tankgirl.com, tnkgrl.com, or search for me, um, Miriam Joir, on YouTube. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my blog has all my podcasts, which are YouTube uh, videos. So you click on one of the YouTube videos and I'll take you to my channel. You know, like it and do all that great stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let me go back here to, you know, showing you my face, being in your face. Um, yeah, so check out my uh, HC10 review. Um, the not the bolts and nuts of that review is that I love the phone. Finally, you uh, you know HTC's back. I have some issues with the camera software. The display could be better, but I love the design, the build quality. This is really a solid phone. I have it here somewhere in one of my many pockets. So you know I will do the nice little show in a loop in front of you. Hang on, let me clear my notifications. La 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 la. Woo, sexy. Look at this HTC 10. Yes, it is hot and sexy and beautiful. It's running in the Google Now launcher here, but uh, there you go. HTC 10. Boom. Now, um, the next phone that I'm playing with that I'm really excited about, I just got this one, is dun, 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 this guy. You know what that is? That is the Huawei P9 with the monster crazy Leica dual camera setup. Yes, two cameras, one monochrome, one color. Gives you all kinds of interesting creative imaging options. I will not get into detail other than say that this is a gorgeous phone. I love it to bits. Uh, let me clear my notifications again because they seem to be piling up. But there it is running its native launcher. It's a beautiful, beautifully made, thin, all metal phone with a 1080p display, not quite HD. But you know what? In every other way, it's a flagship. It's beautiful. It's got a fingerprint reader here. And the camera is really awesome. I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. It's potentially one of the best I've ever used up there with the Galaxy S7, the G5, the H well, the HTC 10, I guess. But more like, you know, GS7, 950XL, you know, the, the Microsoft phone. Anyway, 
there it is. Um, I'm still playing with the Galaxy S7 and the G5, still really loving it. Um, here's kind of my takeaway out of those two that are mainstream phones that everybody can buy. Um, the Galaxy S7 is still the best for auto mode, just banging away and taking photos. Spec-wise, on paper, it's the best. But what I'm finding is that because it's only 12 megapixels that are 4 by 3 and if you want it to be widescreen, you need, you're dropping down to 9 megapixels. Compared to 16 megapixels in the same form factor on the G5, you lose so many pixels about, it's, you're down to half the pixels. Uh, that you end up having a lot of noise reduction artifacting in low light, unless you use manual mode. And even manual mode, I'm finding that focus and a bunch of other things are just not working out quite as well with the GS7 as I'd like. So if you are auto, it's awesome. In, but it, you know, in low light, it gets it loses a bit of detail compared to the G5. And more importantly, the G5, just like the G4, same camera, uh, is still, I think, one of the best in manual mode. It has the best manual interface and gets the most detail and the best OIS. Uh, and then that wide-angle camera makes things so much fun. Um, I'm a little disappointed that that camera, sorry, I'm bumping to my mic, is not out of focus. But at the same time, uh, it's a fixed focus, but it's OIS, and it's 8 megapixels, and the f-stop is not the greatest uh, compared to the, the main camera. But the G5... What vexes me about it is the build quality of the materials, the fact that it's you know a metallic finish, uh, or not an anodized real metal uh, shell. I mean, there's metal underneath. I know, look, I'm going to, I just, uh, metal gate, metal gate. It upsets me, it upsets me because I wanted atomized aluminum. I wanted them to make unibody device just like everyone else. And they didn't really do that. But anyway, here are my devices, my, um, Galaxy S7 also with a million notifications. What is going on? It's late in the evening. Well, 6 p.m. There it is. It's an AT&T version, Galaxy S7 Edge. I'm sorry, guys. I can't always get the phones I want. Sometimes I have to compromise and get the branded carrier bullshit. But there it is. Galaxy 7, great phone. S7 Edge. And then, of course, it is the G5, which maybe. I'll get to wake up and maybe I'll get rid of my notifications as well. But there it is, uh, looking fab. Uh, yep, there they are. So those are the kind of the big ones for me right now. Of course, there is the uh, Nexus 6, which I use as my daily driver, which is right here. Uh, and, you know, which is just delightful. Uh, I've got it in a case because I know it's kind of odd, but. Uh, there it is, because you know I, my my daily driver, it's the gold one, gets uh, pretty abused. So I've decided to put a case on this one, and it's helped so far. So, still like my Nexuses, it's hard to pry my Nexuses away from me. But um, other phones that are still kind of exciting to me and fun, I got, I just got a OnePlus X, a second one, because I had a black one, but this one is blingy as shit. You're gonna love this. Hang on. I need to log in and clear my notifications. But this is the absolutely gorgeous silver and white HTC. Uh, sorry, what am I saying HTC? I was going to say one, HTC one. No, one plus X. The awesome one plus X in white and gold. Look at this. This is this hotness. For 200 and something dollars, like you can't go wrong. This is a fantastically beautiful phone. Thanks to Eric at uh, OnePlus for getting me that. Uh, I know it's not the latest of the of the bunch, but it's it's kind of hot and sexy and makes me happy and makes me feel good. Um, I'm still gushing all over the Robin. Um, you know, who, how can you not like the Robin? Uh, let me pull that one out right now. It is somehow not letting me unlock it but there it is the robin in mint um i love this phone i love the design i wish the camera was better you can watch my review on mobile geeks mobilegeeks.com actually let's go there together because i have screencasting and i can take you there so let's bring up my web browser shall we uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's open a tab and type uh, mobile geeks and uh, next bit, 
Robin review and see what happens. And dun, 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 there it is. OK, so go check that out. I did the video and the photos for this. And uh, Nicole did most of the text based on my input. Um, so it's a great review that I wrote, well, that I co-wrote with Nicole. Check it out. Um, you'll find out everything you need to find out right there. OK, so uh, these are the phones that are still in circulation for me. Um, and I'm excited about, and let me switch back to my live view because I want to be in your face. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, now I've got some accessories because you know what? I get a lot of stuff sent to me all the time from you know having been an editor at Engadget for many years, uh, and people just want to send me stuff, and it's great. But I don't have time. You know, I run a consulting business full time, and then I do this stuff for fun now. Uh, I, I call myself a cranky, jaded, semi-retired tech journalist because that's what I am. But I need to talk to you about a few things that I've gotten that I really like. First up, ba -ba 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 -bong, these things. Wait, they're upside down. Okay. These two things are power line adapters. So you stick your Ethernet into them from, like, say, a router. You stick them into the wall. And of course, you can plug something else in in case that way you don't lose a socket. And then you put one in one room and one somewhere else in another room, and boom, you get the internet. And it's up to 1.2 gigabits, um, according to spec. I've gotten about seven, 800 megabits going through these, uh, like to go into and from a file server, which is exciting. So Netgear, what are these called? Uh, PLP 1200. Uh, really cool. Works really well. Thanks, Netgear, for sending them to me. Uh, I don't want to send them back. I'll be frank. I just want to keep using them because uh, I've got really bad reception Wi-Fi in my house here in San Francisco because everything is made of chicken wire. All the walls are chicken wire. Woo! So with this, I stick this near my router down here, down, down there, there, underneath me. And then I put another one on the other end of the house. And all of a sudden, I can put another router over there and get really good Wi-Fi everywhere. So that's that's awesome. Thanks, Netgear. Um, stick them together. Urf. All right. The next thing that I'm really, really loving is the Zolt. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what this is, but it's a charger, right? Like you plug it into an outlet. It's cool because you can rotate it. See, like that. And it's got three USB ports, what it looks like. Okay. Well, so it's small. It's a travel charger. Big deal. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. These two down here are normal USB ports that do the normal 1M, 2M charging, you know, blah, blah, blah. No fast charge, no quick charge, but that'll come eventually. The top one, though, is also a regular ASB unless you use the special key plug that they provide. You can see the keyhole there right above the socket. And that special cable can be used to charge most laptops. So this is a full-on 18-volt laptop charger, the world's smallest in addition to USB charger in one. And so it even supports the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, which is really great. Not USB-C and the MacBook that I use, the 12 inch yet, but I love the Zolt. I use it as my travel USB charger. Very nice, very well-made, rock solid. Kudos to Zolt, get this, it's great. It's uh, really one of the best. Then I have a, two, a couple of two more accessories that I think are interesting, but um, somebody sent me this. And it's a battery pack, right? As you can see, it has a power switch and a USB output for charging and a USB input for charging the battery and a what looks like a laptop power connector for charging as well. And you're like, what? And then the rest is like this aluminum block. And let me read the specs. I think it's something like... It's not massive. It's like 5,000 milliamp hours. You know, it seems big for what it is. And actually, that's my biggest gripe. It's pretty big for what it is, 5,000 milliamp. But there is a trick. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. Um, this comes with a laptop charger, basically. You plug it into this laptop charging port ooh, right there. You know, And it's uh, 18 volts. And it charges the whole thing in 15 minutes. So you want to top off? Uh, your phone, you had 5,000 milliamp hour to top off your phones or maybe recharge your phone fully. And then you want to recharge this in 15 minutes, you can. So that's interesting. I wish it was um, a bit less sharp. Those metal edges are sharp. And I, miss, you know, I wish it was 1,500 milliamp or something. The final thing that I'm excited about 
that I've actually had since my Engadget days. So I'm finally getting to review this. Um, it is a Bluetooth um, capable, a Bluetooth receiver for audio that plugs into your stereo system. It's called the Nereus. And this one is the an old one, so it's a BR50. Uh, it's been around for a while, uh, and the newer version of this has NFC, so you can just tap to pair. So how does it work? You got a Bluetooth radio inside that supports um, A2DP and aptX, which is great for high audio quality, and has a little LED in the front. You can see, and then uh, of course there's an AC adapter that comes with it and plugs to the back here, and then you can plug either a uh, line in, uh, sorry, that's actually a line, you can, these are outputs, sorry, since you're inputting Bluetooth, right? Your phone is playing music via Bluetooth to this thing, which you can pair with Bluetooth uh, over Aptex or E2DP, and then it comes out with analog audio from this port and Toslink digital audio optical from that point. So I plug that into, say, my DVLA speakers or a, my nicer stereo uh, or whatever, and I basically am able to stream Bluetooth audio at high quality from my phones to a stereo system or anything with analog audio. Nereus, they make a bunch of stuff. They've been around for a while, but I've had this forever and I love it. So that's it in terms of gadgets that I've been playing with. Woo. And in terms of phones and in terms of news and, and, and in, in a nutshell, it's gonna basically be a wrap. So um, again, welcome to the Tanko Mobile Live show with yours truly. Uh, it's a show about news, about reviews, about opinions, about whatever is crossing my mind. Uh, a show for me to connect with you guys to let you know what I'm working on when I don't have time to schedule guests for my podcast because I love my podcasts and I love having guests on, but it's hard because scheduling people is really difficult. And so, uh, you know, stay tuned for more. I'm going to try to do this more often. I might do it from my MacBook when I travel, in which case it might not look this good because the MacBook only has a VGA camera, right? Uh, not HD, but uh, I'll, I'll, see, I'll see what I can do. And uh, maybe I'll pick up a Logic camera just for that. And of course, I'm using a really nice USB mic right now, which is not quite as uh, going to be quite as good when I'm on the go. But I'll keep you posted on phones and phone reviews. I'm going to try to get some videos up on some of the phones I'm playing with, especially the P9. I'm really excited about the P9. So stay tuned for more, and I'm out. All right. See you guys later. Bye.